What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm sitting around the Gem Pie Sunday morning, looking around, and I'm thinking, you know what? Let's do a top 10 favorite omnibus of all time video. A few people have asked for it. Um, I think it's a good time for it, so let's jump into it. All right, guys, so this is my personal top 10 favorite books. I kind of quick, uh, quickly ranked them. Like, I know these are my top 10 favorite, but as far as ranking them, that was a little bit difficult, but uh, I did my best. Uh, let's jump right into it. Number 10 on the list is the Annihilation Omnibus. This was like one of the first times I bought an omnibus blind to the story and uh, got put onto it, you know, through the omnibus format. This um, this book is an epic Marvel cosmic saga. It makes Nova cool. It, it introduces Guardians of the Galaxy as we know them today. And it just has an epic story, man. You have um, a nihilist uh, heavy storyline with the Annihilation Wave and the Negative Zone taking over. You get Galactus, you get Thanos. Uh, and it's just a really epic, epic run. Um, I should do a not so recent reads on this. We did a live show about it like last year, but it's a whale. You know, when I was collecting every omnibus, that's kind of why it was on my radar. I'm like, what is that annihilation with the white spine everybody got? But um, I ended up getting it with Conquest, which was an okay follow up, but it was really all about annihilation. Number 10 on the list. Number nine on the list is The Amazing Spider Man by Todd McFarlane. I'm a Spider Man fan. That's my favorite character spider-man and wolverine but um todd mcfarlane's run like issues two what is this like 296 to like 315 296 to 329 he's just got epic covers epic artwork you get your introduction to venom and um it's just the stuff that i grew up with man so i really like this i bought this in the wild what when it was a whale uh for cover price and it ended up getting a reprint. I think we bought one and, and did a giveaway for it, actually. Well, look, I turned right to the Green Goblin, Hobgoblin stuff. You gotta love this. This is, um, this is what really blew McFarlane up, man. After this, he got his own solo run. Then he started Image and did Spawn, which was super successful, obviously. Number nine on the list. So number eight on the list is The Fantastic Four by Stan Lee, uh, volume one. Super important book. This run of uh, Fantastic Four, one through, uh, what is it, 30? One through 30. So important to the Marvel Universe. So many first appearances. Really created the Marvel Cosmic Universe. But besides the first appearance of Fantastic Four, you get the Scrolls, uh, Submariner, Doctor Doom, um, The Watcher, and uh, really, when you go to like issues one through sixty, then you because then you get Silver Surfer, Galactus, Black Panther, and humans, and all that. But I don't know. I always really gravitated towards this run and this book, just because of how important it is. The dialogue is dated, and you know the art is. I mean, Jack Kirby art, so you really can't go wrong with that. But um, I was gonna rank it higher on my list, man. But when I started ranking them. This is where it fell. Wolverine, Volume 1, Omnibus. I'm kind of a sucker for, like, the origins and, you know, the first appearances and things like that. So I always gravitated towards this book because not only does it uh, include his first appearance in Hulk 180, 181, 182, but it also has uh, his origin in the uh, Marvel Comics Presents Weapon X, which fleshes out his backstory in the Weapon X program. It's got the Frank Miller... Um, four-part miniseries and it has the first what is that the first 10 issues of his uh his ongoing in madripoor as patch and all that kind of stuff so super important book i mean it, ha it happens to also be a whale but that's not why i love it i just love it because of those important stories that it collects doing it old school man <laughs> i wish they would come out with a volume two I don't know what it would collect. Maybe um, continuing his ongoing would be nice. But um, love that Frank Miller cover too, man. All right, so Wolverine was number seven. So number six, I'm rolling with the Venomnibus, man. Growing up as a kid in the 90s, Venom 
was my jam. Uh, all these stories, Lethal Protector, Enemy Within, um, just those, you know, uh, Carnage Unleashed, like those mini series and those Venom appearances. That's what it was all about for me when I was a kid. I love Venom. Definitely one of my favorite characters. I love him as a villain more than anything. Uh, but this run is more of his anti-hero stuff. Manuel did a recent reads on this. I read all this material. I had all these in singles as a kid. And I, I never uh, went back to read the Omnibus. But it's it's my favorite. It's in my top ten favorites. Because it's on the shelf with all these stories that I grew up with. With, the, with that 90's extreme art Venom symbiote stuff so definitely up on the list man number 6 number 5 on the list man more 90's nostalgic stuff for me the Infinity Gauntlet Omnibus this was like one of the earlier Omnibus I bought and that I read cover to cover I love the fact that it not only had the 6 issue Infinity Gauntlet you know storyline but I also had all the tie ins including um, Thanos Quest 1 and 2, including the 90s Silver Surfer stuff, which I love the artwork. And this is just an epic book, man. I know this book went out of print. I don't know if it ended up getting reprinted or not. But um, I, was, I felt so rewarded when I first read this, man. Like I've read the stories back in the day. Maybe not every miniseries, but just talking about an epic Marvel cosmic story. Important even more now than ever with all the movie stuff. <clears throat> definitely deserves number five on the list number four on my list uh amazing spider-man volume one by stan lee and steve Ditko, for the same reasons that the fantastic four omnibus is on here but as a huge spider-man fan and this run of one through 38 so many first appearances such an important spider-man book you get af-15 his first appearance you get amazing spider-man one First Vulture, first Doc Ock, first Sandman, first Lizard, first Electro, first Mysterio, first Green Goblin, first Craven, first Sinister Six. You get first Scorpion, first uh, Molten Man, first Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn. Uh, just an epic book. This is the first print which has like super thick pages and it's, it's a thick ass book. I always wanted to. Uh, buy one of the new printings so that it, it saves some shelf space and was easier to manage but I just don't have the heart to like get rid of this one man there you go right, right away you get Mysterio's first appearance so even though like the dialogue is dated and you know it's Ditko artwork which I appreciate the old school art for sure man it's just super important as a Spider-Man fan it's probably one of the best omnibus of all time man but uh, it came in at number 4 on my personal list Number three on my list, yeah, man. Thought I wasn't gonna show DC any love. You guys have probably heard me talk about my live streams, like what am I, what stories got me into comics, and Death of Superman was definitely one of them. I used to have like the DC Universe trading cards with the gray borders, and uh, I remember wanting to know more about the trading card characters. And uh, Death of Superman trade paperback had just came out. I bought it, and I fell in love with it. This omnibus has that, and. Uh, the reign of the Superman. This is the death and return of Superman. So I loved both stories as a kid, man. The doomsday stuff, the death of Superman, the four Supermen who come up in his wake, the funeral for a friend stuff, which as a kid I could never hunt down all the issues. I love the artwork. The co the copper um, age art is like my shit. And uh, the storyline just resonates with me. I know it was kind of like frowned upon to kill Superman like during that time. Oh, here goes this epic uh, bloody Superman symbol. But yeah, that's what it was to me. It was just epic, man. They, they killed him. Hey, whether it was a um, a gimmick or not, it's like kind of what I grew up with when it comes to Superman. Number two on my list, man, the Spider-Man vs. Venom omnibus. Kind of for the same reasons that, that Death and Return of Superman is on my list. This is what I grew up with for sure, man. Maximum Carnage was that other trade paperback that I uh, had bought as a kid, and I read it cover to cover multiple times. Not only does this book include the entire 14-issue Maximum Carnage, but you also get Web of Spider-Man 1. You get Venom's first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 300. You get the first appearance of Carnage in that trilogy of uh, 361 through 363. 
you get the Wolverine um, uh, Marvel Comics Presents vs. Venom, which I believe is Sam Keith, which is dope. You have Amazing Spider-Man 375, man, that, that gold uh, hollow foil cover. This is all the stuff that I grew up with, man. And, like, if you saw in my haul video, this poster that came in one of those 35 anniversary uh, books, I still have this poster to this day. To this day! To this day! <laughs> I think I got it right here. All right, I ain't gonna pull it out. Anyway. Mark Bagley, at his best. One of my favorite artists to do Spider-Man. This um, is an important book for me. It's just like the reason why I'm into what I'm into today. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely love this omnibus. It's number two on the list. All right, guys. So, man, you made it this far. So, just a quick recap, man. Number 10 on the list was the Annihilation Omnibus. Number nine was The Amazing Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. Number eight was The Fantastic Four Volume 1. Number seven was The First Wolverine Omni. Number six was... The Ven Omnibus. Number five was Infinity Gauntlet. Number four was Amazing Spider Man Volume 1. Number three was Death and Return of Superman. Number two was the Spider Man vs. Venom. And my favorite omnibus in my entire collection of all the Gempire. Is. Rick Remender's Uncanny X Force. I freaking love this book, man. I loved the run when I had it in single issues. I love the omnibus. I love the art. I love the team. I love the story, the dialogue. I love everything about this book. Um, if there was no omnibus, I would have it in the two trade paper bags or I would have the single issues. But this was like the omnibus that I bought that got me to become the omnibus co collector that I am, man. Like, I had a couple of omnis before that. I think maybe six or so. And when I bought this, that's when I got the itch. I'm like, yo, I'm buying every omnibus ever. Like, that's kind of what got me hooked. The fact that omnibus would collect the entire cohesive story, you know, and, and I'm like, if they're doing runs like this, like, this is the way to go for me. This is the format I want to read. Torrenting is overwhelming. There's too many things out there. Single issues takes up a lot of space. It can be very expensive. I mean, this game could be expensive too, but to me, just this made me realize I love the format, and that's why I collect Omnis. And not only that, it's it's a dope story. It's my favorite depiction of Deadpool, besides the 90s mercenary stuff. Um, I absolutely loved the relationship between Archangel and Psylocke. I thought Phantom X was dope as hell. Wolverine. Of course, always great. And then uh, the other characters that jumped in, man. What was it? Deathlock, Nightcrawler, and uh, and those guys. So there we have it, man. My top 10 omnibus in my collection. Um, I was looking at DC to try to get some more DC love, but man, just you know, wasn't speaking to me as much as these other books. You know, Green Lantern by Jeff Johns was an honorable mention. Um... Aquaman by Jeff Johns was an honorable mention, but not to knock out one of these other Marvel ones. And, you know, I'm, I guess I'm more of a Marvel fan overall. That's really what I grew up with, even though I collect all DC hardcovers and, you know, Omnibus as well. Let me know what you think about my list below. What would you switch around? What would you have replaced? Uh, drop me a like on the way out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content. You know, sometimes we'll throw a top 10 list at you, do a little countdown or whatever. And we drop something new every day, man. So sub up and uh, y'all stay minty fresh. Peace. To this day! To this day!